Manuelia Zimba returns every so often to these groves in Chelelo on the banks of Kenya's Tana River. He belongs to the Pokomo community. The groves once housed the Pokomo sacred Ngaji drum, which was stolen by British colonial officers over 100 years ago. In the past, the elders would hide the Ngaji in a place like this. It was a secret place in the forest. Not even small children could find their way here. The drum, or Ngaji, was once revered as the Pokomo's center of sovereign power. It determined their way of life. Without it, the grove is no longer sacred and the Pokomo's governing council, to which Manueli belongs, has lost most of its authority. Since the Ngaji was taken, we have been affected because our society no longer has meaning. Elders like Manueli have vivid memories of the colonial period, but they were too young to have set eyes on the drum themselves. After taking the Ngaji from the Pokomo, it was shipped abroad and kept in storage in London's British Museum. The Pokomo's King Makorani Amungasa VII and the elders in his kingdom are worried the drum will never return. The Ngaji is like a mess. Can you imagine if I had the mess of Westminster, their parliament in England, if I had the mess lying somewhere here? and I'm using it as a food stool. What would the British people feel? It would be sacrilegious. To them, it's, this is a, a, a drum for the savages. But we, it is a beautiful piece, which is not only beautiful, but it has some use, it has some function. Why should you deny an object its functions? Like the Pokomo, Many communities across the African continent have been demanding for the return of these plundered cultural artifacts. Here in Kenya's National Museum, an exhibition is taking place. Invisible Inventories is questioning the results of the object's absence. Yes, like visual for this exhibition is like these empty boxes because like when you go to a museum you don't expect to see empty cases. The missing objects include items such as masks, shields, smoking pipes, combs, grave markers, drums and stuffed lions. All in all, the Invisible Inventories program recorded over 32,000 missing objects. The plan was to create a database of Kenyan objects that are spread out across these cultural institutions across the world uh, because, because Kenya doesn't know where its objects are and what they are. We decided to visualize every object as a shipping label uh, because for us every object that left Kenya was shipped out, right? And honestly, we've covered all the walls but this is only like 2,000. The British Museum has one of the largest collections in the world of cultural artifacts given the breadth of its colonial empire. While other former colonial powers have already begun the process of returning looted artifacts, Britain is still dragging its feet. There's all this uh, bureaucracy, uh, laws against movement of objects, uh, which is really strange that you, know, you take objects from people and then you create laws to prevent them going back. So now it's, it's, it's illegal to return objects, but it was, it was also illegal to take them, right? Chow Miner, a digital heritage specialist, was shocked by how much of the restitution debate and even the actual return of objects takes place behind closed doors. She co-founded Open Restitution Africa, an online platform that puts together data on restitution and brings African positions to the forefront of the debate. Especially when we look at technology per se, we are saying that more people can access this information, more people who are not in expert circles, let's say academics or even in museums, that people who are on Twitter and Instagram and have nothing to do with museums or heritage can actually access this information. And I think that's powerful in, in creating awareness um, that yes, there, has, there is material that has been taken. Makorani, the Pokomo's king, recently got communication from the British Museum that they would like to talk. A huge step forward from when he first lodged his initial request eight years ago. 
His community, which numbers roughly 200,000, live in one of the poorest regions of Kenya. Many no longer adhere to the old traditions and question the relevance of the drum today. Yet, Makorani remains adamant about its importance. It is really a very important centerpiece for our people. But in the museum, it's just uh, an, a momentous attraction. Here, it is bound to the life of all these Pokomas. This is our property. If it is just, then it should be returned to us, not by force. It is lawful that it be returned to the owners. King Makorani and Manuelia Zimba are both aware a return to the old days will not be a reality. But sitting here under the lush mango trees by the Tana River, they're hopeful that their society's distinct identity will one day be resurrected, an era the Pokomo were once proud of. <laughs>